That's Nathan Astle. It ain't the first time and neither is it the last time. Haven't seen Hoggard drop it down and drag it down short there. It's a good pitch still. Possible to play uh, the horizontal bat shots. Astle loves them. Pressing forward for a start. Plenty of bat on it. No one out there. That's Nathan Astle too. <laughs> You'd give him width. He'll look to go for it. Well, not a lot of foot movement, but this is what we talk about, hand-eye coordination for Astle. See, the foot just goes to there. But such a good eye. Yeah, but I think it's a not a bad little bit of bowling either. I think it's yeah. a carrot ball, isn't it? it, it and, and because Astle's good enough, he's got a lot of bat on it. But had it swung another inch or two, then you've sucked him in. So it's quite interesting cricket. If, if Astle's prepared to throw the bat at the ball, like we see him do so often in one-day games, then Hoggard needn't be discouraged. Oh! Oof. That's good bowling, man. Ah, this guy's got good bowling brain on him. Closer, fuller up. They're still just with the weight back a little for a start. Presses forward, and then that foot goes nowhere. Very good. Another excellent Yorker. It's a thoroughly entertaining over to go into lunch. This is the fourth day of the first test match. And one uh, a pretty even Stephen morning. A good shot though. It's going to run away to deep midwick. It's not going to go for four. They may run four though. And they have. 150 up for New Zealand and just 400 to win. England in towards the uh, pads of Astral. Nice stroke. Sort of call that uh, leaning on the delivery. And that's the reason why it didn't really go away to the boundary. But they ran four with uh, good urgency. A lot straighter. And this has got through. Asher Hussain has got a problem with his uh, middle finger. Of uh, his left hand can't get down. Risky. But a bold stroke. He did throw uh, a lot of bad at it, Astle, as he tends to do. And it was one bounce four. You know, I think that's just swung a touch. I think it's just swung it. Caddix pitched it up a little bit further. Drawn the Astle into the stroke. It's a flamboyant stroke. Just look if this shape does. Yeah, it starts wide and goes a little bit wider. So Astle adhering to the old adage, if you're going to flash, flash hard. And he did. Now crunching, cut shot, back behind point. This is good counter-attacking, much better stroke from Astle because he looked to get up over the ball and hit it into the turf. Top of the bounce. And pass point for another boundary. He's got six now. It's a good stroke. In the air, and uh, Caddick thinks that there was an element of good fortune in there. He stood and stared for a considerable length of time. Well, this will be an interesting battle. It's a little overcast. Lights have all gone back on again. And will Hoggard swing it? Oh, good start, wasn't it? 
It's a little uppish from Nathan Astor, but it was pretty well dead straight. Pretty well timed. I like this approach from New Zealand. This is positive, isn't it? Both Astor and Fleming come out after lunch with positive intent. He's bowling from his favourite end again now, Matthew Hoggard. Straight away, Astor into action and is forced to field change. Mid on is now placed. One bounce four, but only just. And uh, I think Nathan Astor will get a couple more of these because it was not played convincingly. It's a good piece of bowling. Very good bouncer. Very straight. Yeah, that's right. Good line. Look at that, right over middle stump. And really, he was forced into that sort of almost a knee-jerk shot, wasn't it? Look at that. Something else to think about. Yeah. Good one in the over. Big over for Astle, big over for New Zealand. Both the thought for Hoggard, 189 for three. Hasn't happened for him today, for Matthew Hoggard. 14 runs off his first over back. Yeah. Well, that'll run away for four. Come through the gully region. It's 50 for Nathan Astle, and it is a well played 52. 10 boundaries. Some typical strong Astle shots through the offside. A valuable knock. It's in the air, but it's wide. Boundary. Uh, it's standard deliver batting. And he's as good a sort of player as just about anybody in the world, I'd say, Nathan Astle. Rufal. Well, that's more, that's really a lovely strike. Much more convincing. Oh, it's a fantastic hit. He's onto that quickly, almost as if he felt the short pitcher had to come. And he's hit it hard and flat. There's a guy out there, what, five yards from where the ball was? Never moved a muscle, just had a look for it. And then heard it against the boards. Yes, I think even Hoggard there was impressed in a way. Beautiful, clean strike. Oh, he really is such a natural hitter of a cricket ball. Great eye-hand coordination. Two forty-two for four. That is very classical. It's a perfect use of the feet. Stays nicely in the stroke, and makes sure that he hits right through the line of the ball. See, the head doesn't move up and down too much either. It's, it's a glide. That's gone again. Just for four, though, this time. Man back on the pull shot. Fine leg, deep backward square leg. Astle picks the gap perfectly. It's a deliberate attempt at a bouncer to get him hooking down... Uh, the backward square throat, but there's a lot of control. He's swung inside it with the body, rolled the wrists on it. That's gone too, this time in front of square. An even better stroke. All sorts of mixed tremors and reactions before T. What he's actually saying to Astle is if you want to take us on, you're going to have to take a risk. Unless, of course, I bowl you some half volleys. In which case, your timing is beyond me and beyond most other players in the world. 
And also on that list, again, most interestingly, Chris Cairns, who sadly we won't see for the rest of the series. And then with an average of 40, the great Bert Sutcliffe. Excellent play. Excellent play. It's just so controlled. He's really just doing as he pleases with every English bowler. This is not an easy shot because you're hitting slightly against the turn. It's the on drive, which means you've got to clear your hip out of the way. Oh, it's a misfield. It's 100 for Nathan Astle. Fabulous innings to watch. Very meaningful too for Nathan Astle. It's on his home ground. Eighth test century. The strike rate is extraordinary. His execution precision outstanding. He hasn't dwelt on it for very long, has he? Let's have another look at how he got there. It was an extremely well-controlled stroke. He got on top of the ball, which meant that Craig White had to do some fielding, or to try to do some fielding. Oh, dear. Wouldn't be a performance as a substitute fielder that Craig White will remember with a great deal of fondness, having dropped a catch down at third man in the first innings as well. He's got another chance to prove himself, but he can't do that, pull that one in either. Astle enjoying himself here. He hasn't had a good uh, run at Jay Stadium in his career. High score of just 45. Well, they're going to persisting with this bouncer tactic that Astle has in pretty complete control when a length ball had off stump he'd push into the covers and flint off could bowl five at the other guy doesn't mean that sort of match though has it <laughs> you're right it hasn't actually this hasn't followed logic is it how about that how about the links ball pushed into the covers too wide <laughs> Great shot, wasn't it? Well, they're coming off his bat like. <laughs> Lovely sound, it's so crisp. Crack. Cover, which was uh, three quarters of the way back, was sort of wanting around to pick that up, and it just raced by. 19 fours, two sixes. Astle now 115. Um, I think that's a bit of a hoax. I think that that is just a little trick. Can't imagine Chris Cairns coming in next with Lou Vincent, the runner. So with a new ball taken, Matthew Hoggard is recalled into the attack at the southern end of the ground. his own trail he has played some fabulous shots reserve Lou Vincent might miss out well oh, that's a beauty that is a beauty straight down the ground the best shot in the game that's like a one iron right out of the screws he stays in this it's really done with uh, almost a forearm jab. And he's hit it, as you say, flush. <laughs> and more. What a display from Nathan Astle.
Session by session, this match has been a ripper to watch. They're on the feet. Every now and then you see a player who's just completely in what you call the zone. Thought was, even for a while Flintoff was yesterday. Well, Astle is in the zone. He's now got to 100 in boundaries, Nathan Astle. Look at that, 22 fours and two sixes. 130 from 127 balls. We've had more than 300 runs today in 72 overs. And that might well be four more. 18 from the over. Hoggard cannot believe it. Goes Astle again. Whoa! It's miles back. And Billy's enjoying it too. Holy cow. <laughs> That is massive. Oh, yeah. They sure are. This is unbelievable entertainment. You, you, couldn't, you couldn't write a script for this in Test Match Cricket. You'd be thrilled with it in a one-day game. <laughs> well, Hoggard has gone for 112. This is 23rd over. He must not uh, know where to bowl. It's, uh, Astor, since reaching the 100. Three dot balls. <laughs> 47 runs. And just a matter of overs. Eighteen balls. That's 150 for Nathan Astle. Wow. That's one of the most ripping displays of power batting you could ever hope to see. Well, 20 balls it took him to go from 100 to 152. 20 balls. 20 balls. 20. Oh, that's four more. Six more. Mamma mia. One hundred and eighty three to win. No, one hundred and eighty four to win. Oh. Absolutely breathtaking. Average just climbing up to forty, and uh, so it should. High score one fifty eight. There it is. It goes past the uh, Perth knock before Christmas. Right in front of his home crowd and family. There he goes again. That's huge. That's on the roof. That is miles up there. It's left the stadium. Andrew Caddick, brand new ball, has just been put out of Jay Stadium. I've never seen anything like this in my life. The cameraman must be absolutely going giddy trying to follow this. They're doing their best, but boy. 178 to win. And they've got to find another ball. That's the delay at the moment. They're going to find a ball that is 
what, three, four... Four overs old, so how are they going to do that? Four overs old that's been hammered everywhere. Look at that for a skyscraper. Oh, it's just unbelievable. Look at the right there. Look at the runs that have just burst forth. The second new ball, 57 runs. 23 balls. Of which six of them went to the boundary, four of them cleared the boundary. Astor 164, he's uh, seriously got sights on 200 here. And everybody up now saving the single, bar the man at deep backward square. So Astor just places the ball down the ground. He'd like this to go for three. My suspicion is that it'll go for four. Uh, that's probably all right. Uh, I reckon they'd rather bowl at Cairns. 76 for nine now. Last five overs, 11 runs per over. Nicely played by Estill. He uh, just punched it. Probably had three on his mind, in fact. Well, Estill has uh, joined an interesting uh, list here. Fourth inning centuries for New Zealand against all countries. He is number 10, Congdon, 1973. That was uh, a lost match. He's in losing by 39 runs, chasing uh, 480. And Thompson and Young, that was a win back in 94. Shane Thompson, where did he go? Where did he go? Uh, just faded away. 120 each. Thompson Young, John Wright. That was a nine wicket win uh, at Wellington against Australia in a one off test. Uh, Vic Pollard, that was a Nottingham with uh, Congdon. Jeremy Coney, you'll never forget that. Uh, 50 for the last wicket with Ewan Chatfield to beat Pakistan at Carisbrook. Turner here at Christchurch. Congdon here at uh, Christchurch as well two years later. And Mark Burgess in the West Indies. Be interesting uh, being a fly on the wall there, those three. Astor Cairns, Vincent the runner. 1-7-1 one, one to win. But Vincent didn't say much. <laughs> I'd imagine Chris Cairns would have just said, well, Nathan, this is just one of those moments, one of those days. Just keep batting. It's instinctive. It's in the zone. It's supernatural. Interesting that nobody is back in the mid-off area. England with a more orthodox field. And so Astor's just going to advance and just nail anything. Six more. Oh. Well, the sound of this is <laughs> shotgun stuff. Charging. Hussain has uh, left it open. Astor says, I'll just have it. Top of the bounce. Momentum into the stroke. That is... What is that? Now he goes leg side. Lordy Lord. Six more. One seven five Astor, no one eight one. Is that four or six? Amazing. I think that might have been six. Nice innings by New Zealand versus England in New Zealand. This overtakes Jeremy Coney's one seven four. Not out. In uh, 83 84. Oh, hello! What a shot! Into the com box! A massive blow! Three sixes in a row by Nathan Astill of Andrew Caddick, England's premier strike bowler. This is the most extraordinary display of hitting of a cricket ball that I think I've ever seen. That the world has ever seen. This has climbed over where we sit 
over the commentary box. Nothing wrong with the delivery. It is just the most pure, perfect exhibition of hitting of all time. That's another six. Another massive blow, slower ball from Flintoff. And crunched over long on by this completely extraordinary performer. Slow ball, 105 Ks, and Astle had to do all the work, and he did. Timing here, it's a great delivery. It doesn't matter. It's one hit away from 200 now. Oh, it's a lovely shot. Three extra cover for four. It's a really classy little punch drive. That is 200 for Nathan Astle. It is enough to say that nobody in history has made 200 as fast as this, in greater style as this, or maybe to mean as much as this. The fastest 200 in Test cricket. So Hoggard back into the attack. Up in the air and uh, out of the ground. Six more. That's why the bumper's a risk. Oh, it's a lovely stroke. Beautiful cricket stroke. Six men on the fence. Doesn't bother Astle, he hits it over them. That's halfway up the seats. It's another mighty blow. This guy isn't just hitting it over people's heads. He's hitting it so far, it's just, it's mesmeric. Yeah, I counted about 36 rows. It's just magnificent. I mean, the, the balance, when you're moving down the wicket, to hold that balance against a, a ball 132 k's. See you later. Yeah. 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 won the test match. Not without a tremor, because Nathan Astor has played the most fantastic innings that I think any of us have ever seen. 222 to give his team the chance to give the world a reminder of what a thrilling game Test Match Cricket can be, albeit in the most unusual fashion here. This has been an extraordinary game of cricket. Memorable for so many things, but maybe most memorable for this man, for Nathan Astle, who from nothing has given us the finest entertainment you'd ever hope to see. Let's just salute him.